Welcome everyone to this week's interview. Today I'm sitting down with Jay Busby. He, we, he is the senior writer at Yahoo Sports as well as author of Earnhardt Nation. Jay, how are you doing today? I'm well, my friend. How are you? Doing good myself. Um, I guess jumping into it, um, what first sparked your interest in getting into journalism? <laughs> journalism? Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's a long, long, long time uh, time ago. I don't know. I mean, I've always enjoyed stories. I've always enjoyed telling stories. I've enjoyed hearing stories. So uh, journalism obviously is is a collection of stories to one degree or another. And and so I've always enjoyed being able to, to be a part of that, to tell a few of my own. And uh, yeah, sports is just such a great venue for that. Um, NASCAR in particular has so many different stories, so many different characters, so many different ways that you can run uh, a, a variety of stories through a NASCAR prism, whether it's uh, talking about races or talking about personalities or talking about tracks or talking about politics, whatever you want to do, the opportunity is there. And so that's what's that's what's always attracted me about it. That's awesome. Um, so, you, you know, when it comes to NASCAR, do you have a favorite story um, that comes to mind, like either something that you think that defines the sport or maybe just something for you personally if you're trying to get someone hooked on nascar you're like here's my pitch yeah yeah that's a that's a good question yeah i mean the, the way to get somebody hooked on nascar is to take them to a race i mean mm -hmm. you know you, I, I hate to say that if you're if you're not anywhere close to a track but if you've got somebody who's just like all it is is cars turning left i don't understand it blah 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 <laughs> the way to do it is to take them to a race. You you you, you get them out there. You, you make them understand this is not like a baseball game where you go and you watch nine innings and then you leave. This is an event, and and if you can yeah. stay there, you know, full day, the better. Um, in terms of storylines, I mean, it's it's tough to narrow it down to just one, but the the whole basis of NASCAR is fascinating to me. The, that it, it started in the the hills of North Carolina and North Georgia with these guys running moonshine. Uh, out of the out of the hills and out of the mountains and and then they had all these skills eluding the uh, eluding the law and then they put those skills to the test one against the other on uh, on Saturday and Sunday afternoons and then later on that night they'd go and run moonshine uh, down to the to the local speakeasy so I mean you cannot beat that no sport comes close to that as an origin story so that's that's a great way to hook people in. And then from there you just want to look at the personalities. I mean you know everybody from from Richard Petty to Dale Earnhardt, to Kyle Bush right now, every single one of these guys has a fascinating story, and I think that that the if NASCAR has made not not as a not the organizing body of NASCAR, but the the entire idea of the sport has made a misstep in the last twenty years. It's been moving away from those personalities and moving more towards kind of a sleek corporate sort of ideal. And I think that that's a, I think that's a mistake. I think you got to let these guys breathe uh, and ladies in the case of. Uh, some drivers, you know, you got to let them breathe. You've got to let them be who they are, and and the sponsorship and the and the character concerns and all that will take care of itself. But uh, I think that there's just every single driver in the field, whether it's 43 drivers or 38 drivers or however many drivers are in a given field, every single one of them has a great story. It's just a matter of digging in and finding out what that story is. I lost you on the audio there, my man. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. There <laughs> Said, we go. Uh, there you go. Moving on. Um, you authored uh, Earnhardt Nation. Um, yes. One of the best racing books I've ever read, by the way. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Was it, you know, I guess, first off, what inspired you to write it? Also, was it challenging attempting to do something new when it seems like there's hundreds of, you know, books out there that, people have just written like here's the here's the story of Earnhardt or whatever yeah I mean the interesting thing was it was one of those things that that was I, I remember I don't remember the exact moment that I said I need to write this book but I remember just kind of looking around saying there is not a book on the entire Earnhardt family you know mm -hmm. there's not a book that that takes you know starts all the way back in, in prehistory and then goes forward all the way through the generations of racing Earnhardt's right up to well until 2017 when I when I uh, published the the last edition of the book uh, yeah there's there, there wasn't uh, a single book that that comprised all of that and if you look uh, all the way through history uh, you know there's there's a lot of trends and a lot of uh, ideas that continue all the way through I mean one of the the fun things that I found out way back researching the book was you know far back in the Earnhardt family history uh, 10 12 generations back 
the 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 guy named Earnhardt, I think his name was Johannes Earnhardt or something mm-hmm. like that. This guy was a wagon maker, so you know, wheels running the family with the with this crew. So it, it's it's just it was fun to see. It was very difficult to do, um, as any book is. Uh, digging into the history, and then, and I did not, unfortunately, have the cooperation of the family. I mean, I guess I had, uh, you know, with some of them. Obviously, there's multiple camps. I had, yeah. I had the the blessing of certain camps. You know, they said we're not going to help you, but we're not going to stand in your way either. And then certain segments I didn't even yeah. hear from at all. But, uh, but you know, you can get great stories if you just talk to the people around them. I mean, you know, I, I, I spent a long time sitting in a trailer with Rusty Wallace and he's telling me story after story after story and perspective after perspective. Larry McReynolds, same thing. You know, all these guys gave me great, great stories about the history of the Earnhardt family. And so while it would have been nice to have the family's participation, you know, it, it, yeah. I think it came out pretty well without it. Yeah. One thing I love too, is that it, you had, you had, like I said, a bunch of like there's stuff I'm reading it and I'm like, man, I thought I knew everything about the Earnhardt's yet. I'm, you know, learning stuff about uh, the family, but also like it, it just seemed like it was very fair in how it told the story. It wasn't a book that you are taking shots and saying, all right, let me, I'll get some cells out of this, but it's also not just, okay, let me just tell you everything. I'm made. It, it just felt like you're getting the real story with it. And that's not something. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't go into this with an agenda. I mean, I know that, that yeah. Earnhardt was a lot of people's hero, and, and and deservedly so. And I know a lot of people hated him, and mm-hmm. deservedly so. I mean, the guy, you know, at times he could really be a jackass, and then he could go out of his way to be a jackass. Um, you know, the, the the person that I think comes off looking the best in all of it is Junior. You know, mm-hmm. I think that that guy's someone who has has borne the weight of unbelievable celebrity and unbelievable pressure yeah. and born it incredibly well so uh you know he's he, you can't find anybody to say a bad word about him i, I know that there are you know the, the, the people have clashed with him at times and that's fine it happens mm-hmm. but and i know that there's some family differences but uh you know, i think that, that he had overall the best sort of uh the the, the most positive portrayal in the book and even Teresa Earnhardt, you know, uh, the the late Dale Earnhardt's widow, uh, you know, I tried to be as fair as I could to her. I mean, she makes, a, she has made a lot of decisions that have made a lot of people very upset. But uh, I tried to be as fair as I could to, to, to understand why yeah. she might make these decisions. And um, yeah, I, you know, it's, that was, that was my goal was not to, not to uh, put anybody up on a pedestal, but not to just uh, throw dirt on them either. Mm-hmm. Um. So for you as a journalist, um, what advice would you give to someone who's wanting to get into the field? Uh, keep your eyes open. I mean, always, always, always keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open and keep a, a notebook handy. I mean, I've got like right here, I've got the, right now, it's the Rolling Stones notebook that I have. But I have these little, I use these little moleskin notebooks that that are, wait a minute, I've got another one right here. There's another one here within arms reach. I always use these things. And it's because you always want to have your eyes open. You always want to be aware. There are stories everywhere, every single thing that, that you do. I mean, I, I, I can look at your shelves behind you there, and there's stories in every single one of those bottles and cans and, yeah. and uh, Funko Pops and all that. And and every single person has a wealth of stories. So my the, the first tip to journalists is just don't close your eyes to any story at all. Uh, and then just do the work. I mean, it's it's a tough profession to get into. It's a tough profession to stay in, mm-hmm. but um, you know, just do the work. And 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 I firmly believe that the combination of of awareness and humility and hard work it does end up paying off. It's awesome. Uh, finally, um, out of all of the tons of NASCAR paint schemes there's been, is there one that stands out to you as your favorite? <laughs> yeah, this is a great question. I mean. Here's the thing. I'm not a big paint scheme guy in the sense that I, you know, I, don't, I can't remember like, you know, the 1997 Bristol. I remember that such and mm-hmm. such. I, I'm not, I don't have that. My mind doesn't quite work that way. I like overall styles. I'm a, you know, I, I was a big 90s racing fan. So I liked all the big flashy schemes. Then there was this one scheme uh, for Earnhardt from, uh, I think it was 2000. It was a Peter Max scheme. Yeah. Look this up. Oh my God. It was so divisive and it was it was basically it was a horrible paint scheme peter max is a, a, is, a is an artist who was who has these huge splashes of color and it's very vibrant and very in your face and it's kind of the exact opposite mm-hmm. aesthetic of dale earnhardt so to see that on an earnhardt three car is is pretty funny um i just i like that just because it kind of cuts against expectations and and i you know this is very divisive to nascar fans but i like the really stupid movie promo tie-ins you know jimmy johnson <laughs> 
had a mask Madagascar one a few years yeah. back and he wore a rainbow wig. You might remember that, you know, and then uh, I think who was it? it was Dale Jr. Had the, the Batman Superman one. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think Jeff Gordon had a, had a Superman one, one time. I mean, they're so awkward and they're so funny. I just, I love that kind of stuff. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of the classic ones. I, I see Petty blue out in the, in the wild. I'm just like, Oh, I love that color right there. But I, I think that, you know, NASCAR should embrace that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and should, and should, it should, it goes back to my idea of having more personality. You should, you should have more fun with paint schemes. Enjoy it. I think the Darlington uh, throwback scheme weekends are great. Uh, I can't wait to see some of the, the horrendous ones that they come with, up with every year. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, a huge fan of the personality of paint schemes. Awesome. Uh, and finally, for people watching this, uh, if they want more info on you or to see some of your work, where can they find you out online? Yeah, I mean, I'm at Yahoo. Uh, it's it's uh, Yahoo Sports. I write there every single day. Um, the, the easiest way is probably by Twitter, um, at J Busby, J-A-Y-B-U-S-B-E-E. Uh, so that's the way to, to, to get through to my to my uh, Yahoo page where I'm writing there. And then uh, I have my own little sub stack where I'm writing, I write about Southern uh, things that are not sports related, just kind of Southern food and tales and ghost stories and fun stuff like that. So that's it. That's uh, jbusby.substack.com. But yeah, anywhere on Twitter is probably the easiest way to find me. And then and Instagram, same thing. You know, all, all the usual spots, I've got them all covered. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Jay. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.